Okay, so this is this is another very cute problem. We, we we're given a set of differential equations, and then we are told the method to use, the variation of parameters. So you might begin to wonder why are we not using um, either of the method of undetermined coefficients? Actually, the method of undetermined coefficients works for some special kinds of functions. So and then since we do we, an example of functions which it works on is probably you have your polynomials, uh, you have the polynomials. The polynomials, it works on constant functions, which also falls under polynomials. The constant functions, and that happens to fall under the class of polynomials. And then the trig functions, the sine of x, the cosine of x, and even the multiple of a multiple of them, linear multiples of the sine of x and cosine of x, and also the exponential function. The exponential function. Now, those are the major classes of functions where the the two methods of uh, methods of under undetermined coefficients. An example is the superposition approach and then the annihilator approach. Now, these are the classes of functions it works in. But whenever you have classes like we have functions like sec theta, tan theta on the right hand side, since it doesn't fall in this class of function, then the method of undetermined coefficient fails in that respect. So then we have to resort to special techniques which is called the variation of parameters. I'm going to go through the problem and explain to you how the variation of parameters is being used to solve a non-homogeneous differential equation like this. So I'm going to start with the first, the first problem. That's A. So A says y prime prime plus y equals this, this, this. So we know that the general solution should be of the form yc plus yp. They are always of this form. The complementary plus particular solution. So to find yc, which is the first step, you find yc. That simply implies solving the associated homogeneous differential equation there equals zero. So when we solve this, we need the auxiliary equation there. So this is going to be m squared plus so this should be one plus one equals zero. And then when we solve this, we have our m equals plus or minus i. Then based on this we have a yc equals c1 cosine of, so you shouldn't write x now because you know we're dealing with in terms of theta, cosine of theta plus c2 sine sine of theta. So the next thing is we want to find yp. So we want to find to find yp. Now as the name of this technique sounds, to find yp we need an assumed form for the particular solution that is going to help us or guide us in trying to find the constants that are known in the assumed form. To find yp, the name sounds variation of parameters. Now the complementary function, the parameters of the complementary function is y is, um, is c1 and, um, and c2. These are the parameters. But then for the variation of parameters, it says to find the particular solution, let us assume that this constant here that is, these parameters here are not constants, but they are functions of x. So E calls it u1 of x instead of c1 now. E calls it the function of x. And then you have your cosine of theta, cosine of theta, plus, so instead of writing c2, which is a constant, it says my parameter here must be a variable. Must be a variable, it shouldn't be a constant. So u2 of x times sine sine of theta. This is just the simple idea behind the variation of parameters. The parameters here are constants, but here it's a variation of the constants. So that's all. So and then to make it easy for you, and we are, we are u1. So we are so we are u1 prime equals w1 all over w. And then u2 prime, that's the derivative of u2 equals w2 all over w. I'm going to explain to you what is w1, w2, and w means. So actually, the w is just a run scan. W is a run scan of the two linearly independent functions here as cosine of theta and sine of theta. So it's the run scan. So to find your own scan of this, so we start by writing cosine of theta, sine of theta. If we find the derivative of that, we have 
minus sine of theta, we have cosine of theta here. So multiply this by this. So you have cosine squared of theta plus sine squared of theta. And then based on trigger identities, this gives us 1. Now to find W1 and W2, you need to ensure that the differential equation is in standard form. So what does it mean for a differential equation to be in standard form? It simply implies that the coefficient of the highest derivative here must be must be 1. If it is not 1, then divide through so as to ensure that the coefficient of the highest derivative of the differential equation is 1. But since this is already in standard form, we are fine. There's nothing to divide through by. So, and then the reason why I said it should divide is that we need the right hand side. After you've done the division, whatever you have of the whatever you have as the right hand side, we're going to call that let's just call that f of x. So since this is already in standard form, I'm just going to call the right hand side f of x. So let me show you w1. So w1 is actually so the first column you annihilate what you have here, so this one becomes 0, and then replace it with 0 f of x, and then you leave the right hand side, I mean the, the second column the way it is, so this is w1, w1, you have sine of theta, cosine of theta, so this is 0, my f of x that's up there is sec theta tangent of theta, then you have sine of theta, cosine of theta. So this is what we have. So what we do is we multiply this, just find the determinant of this. So you have minus sine of theta into second of theta, tan of theta. Now, this is the same thing as minus sine of theta into sec. It's the same thing as one over cosine of theta. And tan is the same thing as sine of theta over cosine of theta. Anyway, sine over cos is tan, so this is minus tan, and sine over cos is also tan, so tan tan gives me tan squared of theta. But then we would recall, according to the trigger identities, we know that 1 plus tan squared theta equals sec squared theta. So to find minus, so this implies that minus tan squared theta would be 1 minus x squared theta. So that's that's what um, minus tan squared theta is going to be. So instead of writing this, so that implies that minus tan squared theta equals 1 minus x squared theta. So you're going to see that this is going to help us in trying to solve um, u1 and solve for u1 and u2. So anyway, that's for w1. Now for w2, w2 just says that this is for W1, annihilate the first column. But for W2, you annihilate the second column. Whatever you have in the second column of the original run scan should be annihilated and replaced with 0 f of x. But leave the other columns. So the other column we have here is cosine of theta. Let me use red for that. So you have cosine of theta, you have minus sine of theta. And while the right hand side, which is when we are annihilating, so we can replace it with 0 f of x. So we have 0 f of x. And my f of x is sec theta tan of theta. So that's what we have there. And then finding the determinant of this, so it's this times this minus 0 times this is 0. So we don't need to repeat that. So we have cosine of theta into sec theta tangent of theta. So that's going to be cosine of theta into sec is the same thing as 1 all over cosine of theta and tan is the same thing as sine of theta all over cosine of theta. Either which way this cosine of theta cancels this so we are left with sine of theta all over cosine of theta. I'm just trying to split the whole thing. I do not need to break tan of theta anyway but I decided to split it to see if anything could cross out because I was not sure. So we are left with so our answer is our final answer is sine of theta over cosine of theta. So now I have w1 and w2. I now come back here. You know our aim is to find 
u1 and u2 because if you can find u1 and u2 we already know this is cosine of theta this is sine of theta so if you can find u1 and u2 we are done so it says to find u1 and u2 i need to use these two equations there so which i'm going to write down so it says u1 the derivative of u1 is w1 all over w and my w that i obtained here is 1 minus sec squared theta so this is going to be 1 minus sec squared theta divided by w w is 1 so that is u1 prime is this so that implies that u1 is going to be the integral of 1 minus sec squared theta the theta so if you integrate 1 you have theta minus if you integrate sec squared theta you have the tangent of theta so similarly for u2 prime you said it's w2 all over w and then our w2 is sine of theta all over the cosine of theta so if w2 if u2 prime equals this so that implies that to find u2 we need to integrate both sides so that's sine of theta all over the cosine of theta the theta so since the derivative of this gives us a negative of this so this means as minus minus this so it's going to be minus the lane of cosine of theta so i'll be able to find my u1 and my my u2 this is my u1 this is my my u2 so i'm going to substitute u1 and u2 into this place here so i can find my yp so on substitution on substitution my yp equals you have theta minus tangent of theta cosine of theta plus we have sine of theta into so the new one is minus lane of cosine of theta so anyway this is what we have for our yp so therefore your y which is the complementary it has your yc as c1 cosine of theta plus c2 sine of theta plus plus your yp your yp what you obtained here that is theta minus tangent of theta cosine of theta plus the sine of theta into minus lean cosine of theta now this is your general your general solution for the differential equation